Welcome to another episode of the E31 S85 engine swap behind me. Today we're going to be re-examining the engine bay and taking another look at that brake system. I think that I might want to reconsider going from Hydro Boost. I think I might want to end up going to Vacuum Assist and let's talk about that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in here, right? The plumbing for the Hydro Boost is incredibly complicated. You have a regulator, you have a reservoir, you have your power, your master cylinder, you have your hydro, you have your actual Hydro Boost module back there against the wall. You have your power steering pump. Remember, the power steering pump on the E31 or M70s, E32s, and also the E34s are a tandem high pressure output, which means it has two high pressure outputs. One goes to the rack for power steering and the other one goes to the Hydro Boost system. So there's actually two high pressure outputs. Given the fact that this high, that this power steering pump is literally buried in the engine and it's only a single high pressure output, I don't think that I'm ever going to be able to retrofit a tandem high pressure output on this S85. So that is just about the game changer for me. But even more importantly is that <laughs> there's so much plumbing here. I mean, um, you know, you have regulators, the pump, the, the booster, uh, the reservoir literally has, look how many outputs there are on the reservoir. There's one here, one here, one here, goes to the regulator, one down here, goes to the pump, and one here goes to the cooler. I mean, there's a lot of plumbing involved here. Getting rid of the Hydro Boost is going to significantly clean up the engine bay a lot. And that's really what I want to go with. What I need to do now is figure out how to fit a vacuum assist module in the, the car, in the engine bay, along the firewall, relocated. I don't know what I want to do yet, but I need to remove this crap before I can really assess the situation. And I need to do everything while the engine is in. Why? Because I need to understand whether or not I can fit a booster where the engine sits, given the firewall and given the cylinder head. So enough talking, let's start going through disassembly and reevaluating the braking system. No idea how expensive it would be to remove this system by BMW Tech if you were to take your 8 Series in and have like your hydro pump replaced. I mean, I cannot imagine um, <laughs> the cost involved there, but it is going to be expensive. It's taken a while to get all this stuff out. The reservoir has got like six different connections that I removed and put over there. And I gotta continue to take this heat, um, this uh, heat recirculating pump out. Um, and then I got to do the uh, master cylinder and then the hydraulic pump, actually the, uh, the hydro boost pump actually is right back there. So I got to remove that as well. So it's, I don't know how much of this I have to remove because this is actually built into the frame, this piece right here. So I don't know how much I have to remove, but I'm going to continue to just remove everything. The idea is that I'm just going to build this all up from the ground up again. So. I know that BMW designs this stuff to be repairable and replaceable with everything to be accessible, connectors and tubings and hose connections and all that, but I'm telling you, this is a real pain in the ass, and I'm somewhat destroying certain things too, like brake lines and all that, just to get everything out, but I don't know how you can ever remove this hydraulic booster with the 
you know, without destroying something. I mean, it's really in there. Let's keep on going. Okay, it is done. I see the location of where the brake booster will need to mount. I see the uh, clutch line reservoir hose. I see the two fuel lines right here. I see some connectors for the hydraulic pump. I see the power steering, uh, the steering column. It is dirty in here. I wanna clean this up first before we start test fitting anything. So now everything is all cleaned up in here. Um, and and I take a, took a look at the booster location, which is the center of where the brake pedal actually is. So that's where you know that you're gonna be getting square brake pedal uh, pressing every time it goes straight into the booster. Here is a JEGS booster that I bought. It's seven inches in diameter. It's a double booster, which means that it's a little bit longer but it's also narrower in terms of its uh, diameter, and that allows for slimmer applications like this one. Um, the bolt pattern here does not line up, and that doesn't concern me that much because it's just drilling holes and getting it in and getting this aligned. But if I were to install this here, I'd see that it would fit really comfortably right here. But as you can see, it actually is about two inches off, about two total inches to the right. And that is not good because now you're talking about a non-normal, non-orthogonal force hitting, going into this brake booster, and that cannot happen. The force going into the booster needs to be perfectly straight. So if I were to, let me try installing this here. So if I install it, it's gonna be touching the valve cover here. Um, I need to shift this over just a little bit. It looks like I'll have room here to actually move this over to the right. But it's much better than having it here because if I can have it here to the right, I actually can only get away with moving it over like a half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And in that case, let me show you what I can do at the brake pedal side only as a modification. Yes, as firewall modifications, I need to drill new holes and get it set over, cut this out a little bit, but... But the modification to the brake pedal is actually not gonna be that hard. This is a steel brake pedal, very easy to weld on it if I need to, and I might actually want to like make like a, like a flare out to this side here, <laughs> I can't point, to this side, closer to the uh, clutch pedal, and that will be the location of where the force presses. So it'd be maybe be three quarters inch pulled, pushed to the left, but then it'll at least get the normal force, the orthogonal force that I need in order to press onto the brake booster squarely. So that's a possibility. There's definitely some, some uh, obstructions here, as you can see on the, the clutch pedal, right? I'm gonna have to move things around, maybe move a bracket around, but it still is nothing compared to, you know, the, the plumbing all the plumbing involved with, uh, you know, the Hydro Boost and the uh, the soft brake pedal that I've heard about uh, for the Hydro Boost. It's just a really complicated system with a lot of moving parts, a lot of tubing, and it's messy and is a lot of chances for leakage. I don't really want to deal with that, so I think I'm definitely going to go with the vacuum booster method and just do the actual modifications to, you know, steel and welding. It's a lot easier that way. I'm not going to be able to do that though until I get the engine out and I can get everything set and fit in place because I can't, you know, I'm not going to be able to to cut and and have the convenience of using an angle grinder or uh, or sawzall or you know anything like that before the engine is is taken out. It's just too hard to do and it just um, I might actually make mistakes. So I don't want to do that either. So just because we can't move forward with the brake booster right now, with the engine in the way it is, we can't do any fabrication on the firewall or anything like that, what we can do is we can install the master cylinder line for the, uh, the clutch. And the reason that we can do that is because...